I'm Robert. I'm John. <laughs> and our project is Android in the real world. So, our project initiated the following image you see here when our members presented it to us. I don't know, I can't really speak for you guys, but when we first saw this image, it was really hard for us to understand what the data that we presented to these graphs represented. So, our project was to create an application where we visualize this data in a more interpretable way, and we created a pie chart, as you see here, which will explain more throughout our presentation. Large corporations such as Ericsson have to keep track of thousands of processes every day. And when we were first presented with this information, it was a giant chart of about 10 columns with less than descriptive names and over 3,000 processes that have to be in the thing. And so for management to have to interpret this data, it would, it would take a quick one. And so our goal was to minimize the time that it would take to interpret this data and improve communication between the technician and the manager so they can address the issue more efficiently. So a big focus of this project was on PPM. Uh, all the all the data tips Tim was talking about, all those like the chart that was all generated from uh, BPM uh, BPM software. So BPM is business process management. Uh, it's basically a way of organizing a business into like a set efficient flow, almost kind of like assembly line. So you take all your computer processes, your people, and you kind of give them a purpose and give them an order. And the problem with this is BPM is designed by engineers for businesses, and engineers work on like quantitative analysis, building models, and then they kind of give it all to the business. And then managers, business managers, have to go, and if there's any problems now with the system that engineers put in place, they have to make the decisions. And they need some kind of technician or something to give them data when something's going wrong, and they can't always interpret that. So we're kind of a go-between to make so the manager can just directly see what they need to do. So first thing we did, we broke down the project into three major goals. We kind of presented with this project problem, and we had to figure out what we needed to do to solve it. So first, on the first layer, is GUI, or graphic user interface. These are actually like windows or screens that the user will see. They're going to be simple and easy to use. They also have to look good and kind of present the information better than the way that we were first shown. Uh, under that, we'll get the information to make the nice graphs and make everything look pretty is the actual app code. The app code has to be really efficient because unlike a desktop or laptop where you have extended batteries and you have a lot of processing power, with a mobile phone or a tablet, you have a really short battery. You don't really have the resources, so you don't want to be draining the user's battery really quick. And you also can't crash your phone or crash your tablet, so you really have to try to make it really efficient. And what underlying that, what gives the app the information, is we had to create a protocol to contact Ericsson server and get their information. If this wasn't in place, we had to try to talk to their app and get information back. Okay, so on the first layer, we got the user in place, and we kind of had like, there's software around that's similar, but it's for desktops. So we kind of had to implement that and make it work on a tablet or mobile. So we wanted to avoid some things that are desktops that are very convoluted and don't really work on tablets. So first thing, like hierarchy of trees, if you ever use like iPhone and there's always that little back button in the upper left hand corner, you start hitting it a million times to get back to where it started. Or if you can imagine you're driving down the road and you keep splitting, there's forks and turns, and you want to get back to where you started and take a different path, easily get lost on your way, way back. So we took a different approach, we used tabs. So we have these three tabs that are at the top of our app, range, data, and flow. And you can get to any part of the app from any other part of the app with just one click. The other thing we really had to avoid is like alienating people. So we use universal colors and ideas. Uh, this took a lot of research because different colors mean different things in different countries. So for example, in North America, green, it's a really positive color. You see green, go, green, good kind of thing, and like red, negative. In other countries, green's neutral or even negative, so we had to go with something like for completed use the color, the color blue. It's common and it it's just means good everywhere you go. The last thing that we had to do really with the user interface was the accessibility part. Some people have disabilities such as color blindness. So here's kind of simula simulation of uh, urinopia. It's the most common part, common type of color blindness, commonly known as red, red green color blindness. And as you can see, everything's still easy to read no matter how you're looking at it. All right, so this brings us to the screen that the user sees when he or she first starts the application. It's also one of the most important because 
This is where the user can set the date and time ranges to query the server. So when we go to get the processes, it goes to get them from this time to this time with these date ranges and time ranges. The default is to get all the processes from the last hour, and we do that by syncing up the system clock to these pickers in the application for <laughs> If you look on the right side of the screen, there are a bunch of drop-down menus. We want to alert the manager if there are a lot of instances of a particular process, or if the process is taking a lot longer than it should be, and here's where we can define how many processes it is too many, and what kind of difference between process times is too much. The default is one uh, If you look at the Submit Changes button, a pop-up box appears just to let the user know that their preferences have been saved, because otherwise they'll keep clicking and wondering if things are happening, and that'll cause internal errors in my name. The bottom left hand corner has a username that's optional. <laughs> if you choose to use this field, then it filters out all the processes to only those initialized by that user. If we leave it blank, like in this example, it simply returns all. We decided upon using high-track to declare information, and as you can see, it's a very large improvement from the original And so, if you put on one of the corresponding percentages that we're bringing to uh, the status, um, completed assignment, onboarded, and if you click on the active, so okay. this is where we bring you to the date tab of our application, where it will list the, uh, the names of processes that have been in this case active, so the ones that are currently running, and also the number of processes, the number of instances for each process. And although we cannot predict what a user would like to prioritize, we can assume that the ones, the process with the higher number of instances are important. So if you click on the board processes, the ones that have been stopped, you can see that the evaluating process, for example, at 92 compared to 1. And so we have the bottom large and slightly bolded so that it will draw it. So if you click on the min max button at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you can see all the completed processes in a table that shows the shortest and longest time that they took. Now this table you see is actually blank when the application starts, and as we query the server, it dynamically adds the table rows. It's also scrolled. This means that no matter how many processes we return, this application still works and filters the properly. You can see we have the process name on the left, followed by the shortest amount of time it's up, then the longest amount of time it's up. We parse these into seconds and subtract them. If this is greater than the amount that we put earlier in the slide on the range we were setting it, then it gets a larger font case and can compensate end of end of the copiers. The last part of our application is the process diagram, which can be accessed by clicking on the close app at the top. And this brings you the use of the process diagram, which is actually very large. The process diagrams can get, have as many as 50 steps, and the user usually needs to see only one or a few of the steps. So as you can see, we're only displaying one of the steps of the process diagram, and this only displays what the user needs to see without displaying any extra information. One of the largest challenges we face throughout this entire thing is contacting the Erickson server. We consider the Erickson Oracle database to be a warehouse, and the Android ETM service module to be the processing center, and the Android itself to be the post office. We send messages from the post office to the processing center so that the uh, database knows which package to send back. And so that message is sent to the warehouse, the warehouse gets the correct package to send it back to the processing center, where it's labeled and transformed into a form that the post office knows how to deliver it to so be rendered on the screen. And throughout this entire process, it's important to monitor what we're sending and what we're getting back. So we use this TCP monitor, which monitors the package we're sending out and, and getting back. And we let us make sure that we're sending the right type of messages out and getting what we intended back. So the main benefits of our application is that the user is able to filter the process that he or she needs to meet their needs. And they're constantly able to modify this data to meet their needs every time. And also, another major benefit of our application is that we chose to use the Android operating system. And this market is constantly growing. And this ensures that there will always be devices to support our application. Currently, Android controls over 50% of the market. And there are over 2,000 distinct Android devices worldwide. And approximately 900,000 devices are activated daily. So for the local scope of the app is to work on the specific VPN of app or it will local focus of the project was to work on this PGM focused app. Uh, the framework that we've been setting down both in the user interface, uh, the server framework, and the app framework can be extended to other types of business processes. Uh, so you can imagine something like inventory. Uh, inventory is really low, inventory is really high, that's all, that's all stored in the server. We can get that information and present it. So 
it would help the manager not only manage the processes that are, their employees are doing, but they can also manage every part of their business. So not only was the app the main focus, but it was really kind of creating a paradigm for a similar application. And we would like to thank uh, our mentors, Erickson, Young, John, and Michael Davies, as well as Erickson Human Resources, Alicia Vissori, and Christine Fabrici. As well, we would like to thank our mentor, Christine Hung, of Osmosis Learning, and our Chief RTAs, Amanda Ramsey, Stuart Nadra, Christine Perkins, and Brian Melvin. And we would like to thank all of the GSAC sponsors for making our project possible. Thank you.